Action News. Delaware Valley's number one news program with Bob Gale, Joe Pellegrino, and Larry Kane. Some of the films seen here on Action News of events along the Jersey Shore are shot by a young man who lives in Atlantic City. But as we learn in Bob Height's People to People report this week, there is a lot more to him than actually meets the eye. Meet Lou Steiner, the New Jersey Shore's one-man news media. He's a TV news photographer, cable TV director, radio broadcaster, reporter, writer, and 22 years old. But apparently the aforementioned activities are not enough to satisfy this young man's media mania. For in addition to everything else, he publishes his own newspaper, The Hoot. How did you, at 22, start your own newspaper? Well, I got interested in newspapers in college, and I was active in uh, the college newspaper, and then once I got into the area more, I felt that uh, there was a lot of entertainment in South Jersey that wasn't being covered anywhere, and there should be a paper that specifies entertainment that uh, could really, you know, somebody who wanted to go out could pick it up and really find out what was happening. And there were other papers that tried to get started in the past, and most of the club people and different pe uh, people in entertainment felt that it, could, it wouldn't work and they weren't behind me in the beginning, but after they saw the paper they started liking it and they slowly got interested. I got some money together, I got a bank loan, and I just you know, got people together and I did a lot of the work myself. Lou Steiner, you might call him a United Press individual. I'm Bob Height and all I do is things like this for Channel 6 Action News. Two major... <laughs> The big story on this Memorial Day 1975 for thousands of relaxed beachcombers in Brigantine, New Jersey, came right out of the novel Moby Dick. There they were, concluding a very happy day in the sun, when the tide rolled in, and with it, what is now considered to be an unusual arrival on the shores of America. It was a 50-foot whale, washed up at 28th Street in Brigantine, floating in the surf, catching the eye of passers-by and startled swimmers, and now the subject of a careful security job by Brigantine police. It appears that deceased whales very rarely wind up in Brigantine, or for that matter, anywhere close to here. So officials of the Smithsonian in Washington have alerted local authorities, hold on to the whale, don't let anyone touch it. They are now on their way from Washington to check it out and record its arrival in the annals of mammal history. There's still time to pledge a donation as the South Jersey March of Dimes comes down to its concluding minutes. The 8th Annual March of Dimes Telethon has been underway since 4 p.m. Friday and will wind up at midnight tonight. A host of professional and amateur performers are taking part in the events at the Howard Johnson's Regency in Atlantic City. The March of Dimes is trying for a goal of $76,000, and anyone with the giving spirit is urged to call area code 609-348-8000. A caravan started out at 7.30 this morning from the New Jersey resort to support the measure. The Atlantic City Chamber of Commerce hired several buses to carry more than 200 people to the state capitol. Dozens of private cars joined the caravan, hoping to fill the legislative chamber during the hearings. The Pro Casino Group also planned to picket outside the state house. Action News continues its preview of Election 74. A heavier turnout than expected is reported in the South Jersey counties, possibly sparked by that big controversy over casino gambling. Early voting was reported particularly heavy both in Atlantic County and Atlantic City, proposed test area for the casino experiment. Democratic congressional candidate Bill Hughes, seen here voting in his hometown of Ocean City, has come out in favor of casino gambling. Hughes is making his second challenge in four years of incumbent Charlie Sandman. Sandman, who has maintained a neutral position publicly on the casino gambling question, cast his ballot at the fire hall in the little Cape May County hamlet of Irma. Sandman, a two-time loser as gubernatorial candidate, is seeking his fifth term in Congress. It's on the weather just a little later on, and here's Larry. See you later, Jim. Since January 1st of this year, there has been at least one multi-alarm fire in the city of Atlantic City, New Jersey, every day of this year. And tonight, there is the devastating aftermath of the worst fire so far this year in Atlantic City. This rubble is all that's left of the nine-story Manhattan apartment building in Atlantic City. A fire started burning there at 9.30 last night, and before the 300 firemen on the scene could finally put it out, the apartments had completely collapsed, and two smaller houses, along with an A&P supermarket, stood in ruin. It was an old building, it's about 70 years old, and all inside, interior, complete interior was wood, and naturally, once it got started, it rolled, especially with this weather and the wind. It uh, was really gone when we actually got here on the first alarm. 
There were no serious injuries, but 14 people, including firemen and policemen, were treated at nearby hospitals. For the 300 homeless residents, many of whom already are trying to make ends meet on welfare, it meant spending the night at a nearby motel. Now I come back, somebody told me the house, on, the house was on fire, and so right away she had left all her money there, and my German Shepherd was in there, so I asked Pedro the policeman, you know what I mean, if I can go back in the building. He said, no. I said, oh, come on, Pedro, and Pedro said, follow me. So we went halfway, but the roof started falling. He says, you can't go no further, you know. So that was it. So between us, she had $5 in the pocket, and I had $2 and some change in my pocket. Everything that I own is gone, even my money, my medicine, everything. I have the high blood pressure and diabetes, and all my medicine was in there. My money was in there, everything. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I just hope I can find another place. Authorities say the tragedy may have been the work of an arsonist. In the past six months, there have been at least two other major fires at this address. The apartment manager says one of the resident's children told him he'd overheard a man threaten to burn up the building. I went to the police department, the detective bureau, it's recorded, it's on, it's on tape, it's, it's there, and told them I had a very strong suspicion that something could happen tonight and I wanted protection. And as God would have it, I was there at a church vestry meeting when the alarm went off and I had to bolt out of that when I found out that the fire was at 11.06, so that all of our dreams were destroyed, but not broken. Local fire officials and the prosecutor's office are still investigating. Bonnie DeVries, Action News, Atlantic City. Action News. Delaware Valley's number one news program with Bob Gale, Joe Pellegrino, and Larry Kane.